Hey there boys and girls, welcome to our lesson on energy transfer in the atmosphere. Now as you can see, I've opened up this lesson with this gorgeous picture of this morning scene on a pond. And the reason why I did that is because it's showing some energy transfer right here. As you can tell, there's fog developing on the surface of the pond here. And, and what happens is that the warm air that's carrying humidity or water vapor in it is moving across the cool surface of the pond. And heat always goes from hot to cold. So the heat from the air is then going into the pond and trying to warm the pond up. And as a result, the water vapor that was in the air starts to condense. Now that heat transfer is an example of an energy transfer, and that happens all the time in our atmosphere. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to discuss the three different types of energy transfers in our atmosphere. So let's get started on that. All right. Now, if you take a look at this chart here, we have three main types of energy transfers that we are going to discuss. Over here on the left, we have radiation. In the middle here, we have conduction. And over here on the right, we have convection. Let's start off with radiation first. This is probably the easier one to remember. Radiation is the transfer of heat in the form of electromagnetic waves, such as sunlight. And that's the main source of energy we'll talk about, is the sunlight. Now, if you've ever were chilly and you walked out to a sunny open area and felt the sun's rays on you, you notice that you've heated up. Well, the light from the sun is transferring heat from the sun onto your skin, warming you up and making you feel more comfortable. So that's one example of a heat transfer through radiation. Second of all, we have conduction here. Now, conduction is the transfer of heat through two objects that are touching. As you can see in this picture above it, we have this lady with her hands wrapped around a warm cup of cocoa, which looks amazing right now, actually. But I'm sure we've all been there where we had cold hands and we grabbed or got something that was hot to drink and we wrapped our hands around the cup to warm up our hands. Now, because your hand was touching the hot cup, the heat from the cup is being transferred into your hand through direct contact. If you had this on the table and your hands were off of it, your hands wouldn't warm up. But since you're touching it and in contact with it, the heat moves from the cup into your hand, which then warms up your hand. And then lastly, we have our convection. Convection is the flow of heat that shows warm air rising and then cool air sinks. And we talked about the air balloon before. So as you can tell up in the picture here, the pilot of the air balloon is pulling the cord, creating the flame, and that flame is heating up the air, which causes the balloon to inflate. And then because the density is low, the warm air is going to pick the balloon up. And if this gentleman or the pilot wants to get lower in the atmosphere, they would turn off that flame and then the air would cool, becoming more dense causing the air balloon to come down. So convection is kind of how an air balloon works. But let's take a look at how all three of these forms of energy transfers actually warm up our atmosphere. All right, so here we have a beach and we have this couple there and they're enjoying it. They're getting ready to spend the day, but little do they know that energy transfer is occurring, which is creating the ideal temperatures for this day. Now the sun, as you know, shines and its light travels through space and it strikes the Earth's surface. And this is called radiation. So when you've been to the beach and you've gone in the morning, you've probably noticed that the sand feels nice and cool early in the morning. And about noon, 1 o'clock, after the sun's been out for a few hours beating on the sand, that sand gets hot. And that gets heated up because of radiation. So radiation is going to warm up the sand because the sun's rays are going to cause the atoms in the sand to vibrate. So let's take a look at how that looks. Now here... We have this cube down here, so let's pretend it's a single grain of sand. And this isn't all to scale, but you know this is here for our visual purposes so we can see what's going on. Now, this grain of sand is made up of all these atoms, and those are the orange circles in there. So as this radiation, this sunlight, hits the grains of sand, they excite these atoms, and these atoms start to vibrate. And as they start to vibrate, they collide with one another. They bump into each other. And then you have a ton of these atoms doing that. So as we discussed before, when these atoms bump into each other, they release heat. So you have all these atoms in the sand grain vibrating, bumping into each other. They're releasing a lot of heat. So that sand grain gets hot. Well, the next sand grain right next to it is getting warm too. And then the vibrating sides of those sand grains are touching each other and they're releasing heat. So through radiation exciting all these atoms and all the grains of sand here in this beach, the sand begins to warm up. Now, as you may have noticed, these atoms are bumping into each other, so they're having contact with one another, and that's conduction. Not only are the sand grains warming up, the air is warming up. Because, as you know, the atmosphere of the air touches everything on the Earth's surface. 
There's nowhere you can go where the air is not touching the Earth on its surface someplace. So as a result, since the air molecules here are touching the Earth's surface, these molecules are going to move and they will then collide. So as they move, they're going to collide and bump into the sand grain. And as they bump into the sand grain, as we know, collisions release heat. As a result, these collisions are going to release heat into the air and that heat is going to warm up the air. And then these molecules are going to zip around faster, have bigger collisions, release more heat. And it's all going to heat up. Now, as we learn, fluids, when they heat up, their density decreases. And since their density starts to decrease, that material or this air is going to start to rise into the atmosphere. Now, this air is going to rise into the atmosphere and is getting away from the Earth's surface, which is warming it. So it's kind of like if you were standing in front of a fireplace and then moved away. Up close to the heating source of the fireplace, you were nice and warm and toasty. But maybe you got too hot and you walked away. And as you walked away, you started to cool down a bit because you weren't feeling that heat anymore. Same thing with the air here. The fireplace in this picture is the ground and you are being represented by the air. And as that air rises up from the Earth's surface, it's going to start to cool. And that heat is going to go off into the atmosphere and heat it up a little bit. But since that air cools, as we know, materials that get cool, their density starts to increase. So this air is going to then cool and then start to sink and then make its way back down to the Earth's surface because it now has a higher density than before. But as you can tell, this air has moved back down to the Earth's surface, which is warm. So as a result, the air is going to warm back up again and create this cycle. And this cycle is called convection. And then this, this here is actually called the convection current because this is going to constantly flow like this. So convection is the flow of heat as warm air rises, cools, and then sinks, but then warms back up again and goes through in this pattern here. So that's how the Earth heats up the atmosphere. The sun warms up the ground, and as the vibrating atoms of the sand generate heat with the air that's touching the ground, you have that contact, that direct contact with the air in the ground, so that's conduction. And as that density of the air becomes less, it rises up into the atmosphere and then cools and releasing that heat. So as it cools and then sinks, we now have convection occurring. So how can you remember these transfers of energy? Well, there's some simple ways that you can remember them. So let's take a look at them. So I just want to show you some memory tricks that I remembered when I first learned this stuff that helped me remember what was going on here. So let's start off with radiation. That's pretty simple. The word radiation starts off with the word ray. And if you remember, radiation comes from the sun. And what does the sun give off? The sun's rays. So you can always remember that the radiation is the rays from the sun. Now, in conduction, you have a C and you have a D here. And I always remember them as direct contact or touching. Conduction was when two things were touching each other and heat was getting transferred that way. And then lastly, convection. One way that I learned it was I kind of played with the word a little bit and changed it around and I changed it to convection because it reminded me of a conveyor belt. So it had this type of motion to it. If you take a look at the belt, imagine the belt is the air, okay? It's cooling here and then it sinks and then it moves across the Earth's surface, gets warmer and then rises and then cools and then sinks again. So it reminded me of a conveyor belt. And that cycle is what helped me remember what was going on. Okay, so your convection is when the air circulates around like a conveyor belt. And that, that'll do it for our lesson on energy transfer in the atmosphere.